Hello everyone, welcome to Courts Today by Live Law, your one-step destination for the latest and fastest legal updates. I'm your host Urvashi Chauhan, bringing you day-to-day -day happenings, landmark judgments, crucial rulings and expert insights into the world of law. Let me start by informing you that Delhi Chief Minister and Aam Admi Party Chief Arvind Kejriwal has approached the Supreme Court challenging his arrest by the Central Bureau of Investigation in the Delhi Liquor Policy case. This latest petition before the Supreme Court challenges the Delhi High Court order of 5th August by which his plea against CBI arrest was dismissed. Senior Advocate Abhishek Manu Singhvi mentioned the matter today before the Chief Justice of India for urgent listing to which the CGI said that he will examine the email request and assign a date. You already know that Kejriwal was formally arrested by CBI on 26th June while he was in custody of the Enforcement Directorate in the money laundering case arising out of the alleged liquor policy scam. Then on 12th July, the Supreme Court granted him interim bail in the money laundering case. But he continued to remain in judicial custody due to his arrest by CBI. Challenging the CBI arrest and seeking bail, Kejriwal moved the Delhi High Court, but his plea was dismissed. Coming to the next update on the matter regarding farmers' protest and blockade of the national highway at Shambhu border between the states of Punjab and Haryana. The bench comprising Justices Surya Kant and Ujjal Bhuya today heard the state of Haryana's plea against Punjab and Haryana High Court's direction to unblock the Shambhu border. The states today submitted a list of names of persons to the apex court who could be included in the panel proposed to be formed by the court to hold negotiations with the protesters and the government. The court appreciated the efforts taken by both the states in proposing the names. The bench directed the director generals of police of Punjab and Haryana along with the senior superintendent of police of Patiala and Ambala along with the deputy commissioners of both districts to hold a meeting within one week to lay down the modalities for partial opening of the highway for the purposes of ambulances, senior citizens, women, students, essential services and any commuters of the nearby area. In another development in this case, the court today turned down a plea made by the state of Haryana to stay the Punjab and Haryana High Court's order for judicial inquiry into the death of a protesting farmer. Shubkaran Singh lost his life on 21st February while protesting inter alia for the demand of a law guaranteeing minimum support price for crops on the Punjab-Haryana border. Alleging that he lost his life after being hit by a bullet fired by the Haryana police, his family had approached the High Court. In the order passed by the Punjab and Haryana High Court, it had said that the investigation could not be handed over to the state of Punjab or Haryana. It had formed a three-membered committee headed by a retired judge of the Punjab and Haryana High Court. Against this, the appeal was filed before the top court. But the bench said that the committee will give its opinion regarding the force used by the police. Based on this, determination would be made either by the High Court or the Supreme Court. After this, the court adjourned both the matters to 22nd August. The Supreme Court today dismissed a petition challenging the decision to hold a re-examination for the UGC NET exam. The UGC NET 2024 exam took place on 18th June in which over 9 lakh candidates appeared. The Ministry of Education cancelled the exam after the National Cyber Crime Threat Analytics Unit, a part of the Ministry of Home Affairs, flagged concerns about its integrity. The case has been handed over to the CBI for further investigation. The retest for the same is now scheduled for 21st August. The petitioners here contended that since the CBI has recently found that the evidence suggesting a paper leak was fake, it raises questions on the reasonability for cancelling the exam. The petitioners claim that the cancellation has caused stress and wasted resources for many students who had prepared hard for the test. It was argued that cancelling the exam based on false evidence was deeply unfair and goes against the principles of fairness in India's constitution. But the Supreme Court bench comprising CJI Chandrachud, Justices J.B. Pardewala and Manoj Mishra observed that two months had passed since the initial decision, that over 9 lakh students were involved, but only 47 petitioners challenged the re-exam. It stated that accepting the petition would only create uncertainty and chaos. 
the CGI emphasized the need for finality, allowing the exams to proceed on 21st August, ensuring certainty for students. The Supreme Court today confirmed the interim stay on a direction that old pension scheme in accordance with CCS pension rules 1972 shall be applicable to paramilitary forces or central armed police forces personnel as well. A bench of justices Sanjeev Khanna, Sanjay Kumar and R. Madhavan allowed Union of India to appeal against a Delhi High Court order by which the petitions of CAPF personnel were disposed of in terms of the High Court's decision in Pavan Kumar and others versus Union of India and others. In this Pavan Kumar case, it was held that paramilitary forces are armed forces of the Union and the old pension scheme is applicable to them. During the hearing today, additional Solicitor General Eshwarya Bharti explained that the respondents were seeking parity with the defence forces and that the High Court had held that benefit of OPS shall be applicable to all personnel of CAPF. Advocate Ankur Chibar, representing the respondents, requested a fixed date for the case, but this was declined as the matter was considered not urgent. The Supreme Court confirmed the interim stay from September 15th 2023 and permitted the parties to apply for an early hearing. In the next update, the Supreme Court today extended for six weeks the stay on defamation proceedings initiated against Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal for retweeting a video by YouTuber Dhruv Rathi making certain allegations against Bharatiya Janata Party IT cell. Kejriwal initiated the present proceedings after a defamation case was lodged against him for retweeting a video on social media platform X, making certain allegations related to BJP IT cell. Initially, he approached the Delhi High Court against summons issued in the case. However, the High Court refused to quash the summons. Aggrieved, the Delhi Chief Minister approached the Supreme Court. Senior advocate Dr. Abhishek Manu Singhvi for Kejriwal informed the court that efforts were ongoing to work out a settlement with the complainant and sought more time for the same. The bench comprising Justices Sanjeev Khanna, Sanjay Kumar and R. Madhavan relisted the matter after six weeks and directed that the interim order of stay on defamation proceedings shall continue. Today, the Apex Court has issued notice to CBI and ED on Bharat Rashtra Samiti leader K. Kavita's pleas for bail in the money laundering and corruption cases related to the alleged Delhi liquor policy scam. I must help you recall here that she was arrested by the Enforcement Directorate on 15th March. While she was under the agency's custody, the CBI was granted permission by the trial court to interrogate her in jail. After that, Kavita was arrested by CBI as well. When she approached the trial court for bail in the CBI and ED cases, the pleas were rejected in May this year. Thereafter, she moved the Delhi High Court. However, her pleas were dismissed with an observation that she was prima facie one of the main conspirators in relation to formulation and implementation of the Delhi Excise Policy 2021-2022. Against this, she is now before the Supreme Court. A bench of Justices B.R. Gawai and K.V. Vishwanathan today issued notice upon hearing senior advocate Mukul Rohtagi, who argued on behalf of Kavita that she had been in jail for five months and that the charge sheet in both the ED and CBI cases had been filed. Referring to the judgments passed in the cases of Manish Sisodia, Prabir Purkayast and Arvind Kejriwal, Rohtagi further submitted that Kavita's case stood covered by the Supreme Court's judgments. He made reference to proviso of section 45 PMLA to also urge that Kavita is entitled to bail as a woman. The bench, however, denied the request for interim bail and listed the matter on 20th August. Also, the top court today issued notice to the Directorate of Enforcement on the bail plea of Aam Admi Party communications in charge Vijay Nair in the money laundering case pertaining to the excise policy. The bench of justices Rishikesh Roy and SVN Bhatti was hearing the SLP preferred by Nair challenging the Delhi High Court order that denied him bail. His counsel argued that he had been incarcerated for more than a year and 10 months and that he had been granted bail by the trial court in the CBI case and was seeking bail only with respect to the PMLA case registered by the ED. The counsel further said that Nair was at a much higher footing as compared to Manish Sisodia, who sought bail in both CBI and ED cases and was granted bail last week. 
The Supreme Court has today dismissed an appeal filed by the state of Himachal Pradesh challenging division benches order of the High Court which had held that the government forcibly acquired private property of a person thus violating the fundamental right under Article 300A of the Constitution. A bench of justices Dipankar Datta and Prashant Kumar Mishra was hearing a petition where the government had allegedly acquired the land for the construction of Rakad to Basoli Road without resorting to provisions of the Land Acquisition Act of 1984. While the state claims that it had obtained oral consent of the land owners to utilize it for construction, there is no evidence to substantiate the same. The state argued that the land had been donated voluntarily. When asked about some document to prove the same, the counsel for the state said that there is a 1989 document which is not traceable right now but could be brought on record. The advocate referred to a case from 2011 titled Sayyid Makbul Ali versus State of Uttar Pradesh where the apex court had cautioned against entertaining writ petitions filed decades after land dispossession seeking compensation. The court had noted that villagers sometimes voluntarily donate land for public purposes like roads or tanks, which may have little value at that time. However, when land values rise over the years, landowners might make delayed claims alleging their land was taken without consent. The court had warned that such late claims put the state at a disadvantage as it may lack records to contest them. But the court did not agree with the arguments and dismissed the petition today. Justice Datta advised that if the documents are available, it should be taken to the High Court, requesting them to exercise their powers to review the same. The Supreme Court has dismissed another petition seeking that licenses allotted to disabled persons to run shops, etc. should not be limited by a time period. A bench of justices P.S. Narsima and Pankaj Mittal was hearing a petition where the petitioner challenged an office memorandum from August 2016 by which certain policies were laid down for the allotment and renewal of license of shops, spaces and sites for commercial utilization at interstate bus terminals of Delhi. The petitioner took a reference to Section 37 of Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act and claimed that once a person with a disability has secured an allotment, then he is entitled to be issued a license forever. As per the petitioner, granting license for a limited period does not serve the purpose of rehabilitating a disabled person. It was argued that once the intention of the statute was to rehabilitate a disabled person, the allotment should be in perpetuity. But the court refused to consider the petition with Justice Narsimha stating that more harm would be done if the prayer was granted as the government might withhold it from the people saying that it will only be given away as a lease or sale. Let me tell you here that the Delhi High Court in 2019 had also dismissed the petitioner's plea saying that the law and policy were designed to benefit all disabled persons. Licenses are granted for a fixed period of three or five years and after the license expires, it is renewed for another disabled person, ensuring more people benefit. It had said that if the petitioner's argument was accepted, meaning that an allotment given to a disabled person would remain with him indefinitely, it would prevent other disabled persons from benefiting. The Delhi High Court has today granted interim protection from arrest till 21st August to former probationer IAS officer Pooja Khedkar who is accused of misrepresenting and falsifying facts in her application for Union Public Service Commission Civil Services Examination 2022. Justice Subramanian Prasad issued notice on Khedkar's anticipatory bail. It however ordered that Khedkar shall cooperate in the investigation. A petition has been filed before the Delhi High Court against exclusion of Section 377 of the now repealed Indian Penal Code from the Bharati Nyaya Sahita. Section 377 of IPC has now been deleted and unnatural intercourse against men or bestiality are no longer offences under this new BNS. Let me tell you here that in the landmark ruling of the Apex Court in Navtej Singh Johar, a bench of five judges of the Supreme Court had partially struck down the Section 377 of IPC, which criminalized consensual carnal intercourse. However, forced intercourse with an adult male and bestiality, that is sexual intercourse with animals, was an offense under IPC. But the BNS has completely deleted the offense, implying that forcible carnal intercourse against a man and bestiality are no longer offenses. 
The counsel appearing for the petitioner today submitted that absence of section 377 of IPC in the new criminal law poses threat to individuals, especially people from LGBTQ community. The matter was mentioned today before a division bench comprising Acting Chief Justice Manmohan and Justice Tushar Rao Gadela, which allowed listing for tomorrow. And lastly, a public interest litigation has been moved before the Calcutta High Court over an incident of brutal rape and murder of a second-year postgraduate medical student who was found dead in RG Car Medical College and Hospital's seminar hall where she was resting after completing her night duty in the early hours of the morning. According to local reports, the trainee doctor had completed her night shift and had gone to rest in the college's seminar hall before being discovered in a brutal condition in the early hours of 9th August. After a preliminary investigation, the Kolkata police had arrested a civic volunteer who worked with the local police force. This arrest has been termed as a cover-up, with the council claiming that State police's investigation had been faulty and that they were trying to make a scapegoat out of the accused in an attempt to cover up the real facts. In this regard, a plea was mentioned before a division bench of Chief Justice T.S. Sivangnanam and Justice Hiranamai Bhattacharya today. Other pleas were also mentioned with counsel urging the court to take up the matter suomoto and for transferring the probe to a central agency. In asking the council to avoid multiplicity of litigation, the bench assured that they would hear all the contentions and listed the matter for hearing tomorrow. If you wish to know more details about the cases that I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.